Metal for Metal Universe. I'm PJ Steven. That's Dennis Parker, and we're here to give you the Metal for Metal news. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, right into your ear holes, and we're going to give it to you hard and fast. Again, like college, but it might be just like that uh, hooker from the other night. I actually never made it to college, so I don't even know that what that... doesn't surprise me. I don't even know what that's like, but I heard it's great. You know, you want to find out... <laughs> <laughs> Not really, it's too expensive. It is very expensive. Before we uh, get into this, uh, guys, I just want to say real quick, we just came back from the new uh, Spider-Man movie. Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh, we're big uh, movie buffs and uh, Marvel comic book fans. Big comic book guys. And uh, Spider-Man's been my jam since... Yeah, Spider-Man's always been uh, my guy. S Spider-Man's been my favorite superhero since I was six years old. I fell in love with Spider-Man uh, after the animated series that came out with him in the 90s. The it's 90s one of my one. favorite uh, TV shows ever. Jason Willis is a big Spider-Man fan as well. And, I still uh, watch where, that what comic show. Book short, what comic book store did we go for our comics? Oh, uh, what is it? Sound, 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 Sound Wave! Wave! Right here in Charleston, South Carolina. Greg, we love you. We <laughs> love you, Greg. Thank you uh, so much. I didn't like the new Spider-Man movie. But it's because I'm a perfectionist for Spider-Man. Yeah. I don't like, and, uh, you know, we're not going to spoil anything for you. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're, we're not going to watch the yeah. rest of the video. Right. But it's just, yeah, I'm a perfectionist for Spider-Man, and this was not a perfect Spider-Man movie. But, the, uh, see, in my, my retaliation to this, my retort, is that there's never been a perfect Spider-Man movie. I, in my opinion, the closest we ever got was Spider-Man 2 with Sam Raimi. Back in the day, you know, with Doctor Octopus, yeah. and that was but, it's a good movie, but it still never captured that that essence. There was always still little things wrong with it, and I mean, I know you don't want to get too nitpicky about things because taking yeah. a, a comic book into a movie is a whole nother thing. Well, you know, here's what I mean? the thing: we haven't got a perfect Spider-Man, but Spider-Man is one of the easiest characters to do. You would think because he's so he's on he's so. Cute. I mean, anyway. Yeah. Uh, getting right back uh, to, to it, guys. Or getting right back to the uh, heavy metal. I do want to mention uh, real quick that is probably the coolest shirt that we might have here uh, on uh, Metal for Metal. We actually mentioned this on the Kathy Griffin episode. Yeah, we did. And, and, and I went out and got it. This Trump blowing his fucking head off. And wait, wait, let me see if I can get it here. On the back of it, can you it see says, it says, uh, "Yeah, it says uh, the only walls we make, oh, the only walls we build are walls, walls of, of death. death." Yeah, we've been in a wall of death. Yeah. I always wondered if, um, because I'm, I, I, I'm really like a, a moderate libertarian, you know, when it comes to things. So I'm, I'm very much conservative. So I'm always kind of wondering if someone, if, if someone like a Republican is going to see me wearing this shirt and go, oh, that damn liberal there. And really, I'm just way more conservative than you could, ever, <laughs> than you could possibly ever be. In fact, the only way this shirt could be better if Obama was on the other side of it blowing his fucking head off, too. But I digress. That'd be good. That'd be great. That yeah. would be great. Uh, while I got you guys here, uh, don't forget to check out our Facebook uh, page. We've got uh, over 130 likes. I'm very proud of that. Thank, Thank you guys you. so much. Thank you. Again, metalformetal.com is up. And our Instagram account is up, being run by, by my girlfriend, who's she's actually at uh, my girlfriend Lauren is actually at Warp Tour right now. Yeah, she sent us a video of uh, Guar. Uh, she sent us a video of Guar, uh, which I'm very excited for. Uh, speaking of that, the uh, volume two of Guar is out, by the way. Um, uh, I, I, I did pick it up. It's still the same artwork. It's fantastic. It's really cool to see. Um, oh, the comic book? Yeah, yeah, yeah the oh, second nice, issue. Nice. Or, yeah, did I say that? The second issue of the comic book is out. Right, right, right. Uh, I was at, I'm not a big Warp Tour guy because of these newer bands that are coming yeah. out, but actually, this Warp Tour had a lot of great punk bands. Yeah, um, Municipal Waste was there. Yeah, Municipal Waste. Uh, Goldfinger, Anti Flag, uh, Adolescents were there. Uh, a couple of. Um, more local punk bands that actually Rick and Stacy are familiar with. Uh, so I would have actually liked to go to this one. The first yeah. tour I ever went to had Rise Against, The Used, and uh, uh, Taken Back Sunday, which, I, I mean, like The Used, their first two albums are really cool. Mm -hmm. I'm into that, that dark kind of shit. And then... Uh, didn't that Used guy, didn't he used to date Kelly Osbourne? Wasn't that a thing? I... That sounds Maybe, yeah, a that, thing. <laughs> somebody can I, I also saw... Uh, I saw... Um, I saw I wrestled a bear once, and they were pretty good. And uh, I remember seeing this acoustic guy named Chuck Reagan who did some really, really killer stuff. Anyway, but uh, that was yeah. so. Warp Tour's going on right now. So if anyone's seeing Warp Tour, be sure to stop by and see Guar and all those great punk. Bands. Definitely see Guar. Actually, I've been to one Warp Tour in my life, and I don't remember a lot about it. Maybe I was just too drunk or something. But the one thing you? I, yeah, me. No. <laughs> 
But the one thing I do, I can take away from that is that that they had a Guitar Hero 2 booth. Oh, okay. Where you could you could play Guitar Hero 2 and like nobody had had it at that time. And all that was the, the first. Are, like, running up on they me. really are all, yeah, they're all, all on, on me. But yeah, that was my takeaway from that Warped Tour. That's just, cool. Just was getting to play Hero. Guitar Hero 2 and then I don't remember anything else about it. Wow, well, it sounds like Warped Tour was great for you. I hope it yeah, was, I mean, uh, I guess. I hope it was great. She went to go, she, her biggest thing is wanting to go see Silverstein. She loves oh, Silverstein. Cool, cool. Um, Anyway, uh, moving right along, we're going to get right into the Metal for Metal news. Uh, really excited to bring you guys these topics. Really uh, a variety cool stuff of stuff. There's, there's some cool stuff. Uh, starting off with, of course, as you know, my favorite band in the world. I think the greatest heavy metal band that's ever hit the stage. Iron Maiden. And the other thing that I've actually started to cut off of because I need to lose weight is beer. And when you connect the two, you get, of course, Iron Maiden's new beer, Hallowed, right? Yeah, yeah. Which is ironic because they still can't play Hallowed be the name, but they can make a beer. Not that we know of. Yeah, but they can still make a beer after it. They can name a beer after it. But um, Tell us about that, Dennis. I'm getting thirsty um, just thinking about it. Yeah, no shit, right? Okay, so Iron Maiden independent family brewers Robinsons have revealed a brand new Belgian style beer, Hallowed. Uh Uh, The new ale follows from the success of the original Trooper beer. Actually, the first time I ever had that beer, I think it was like three or four years ago at my birthday, uh, you bought it for me at Ice House, wasn't it? I did, yeah. That was was the first time uh, I ever had it. Eight bucks. It was, it, it was, was expensive. expensive. That's why I had never it was bought really it. And expensive. I, never, I remember we were talking about getting it or something, but I couldn't find it anywhere. And then we were at Ice House and you bought me one. Yeah. And it, it was I good. Okay, it's actually. Yeah. It's a good beer. Like, I'm not, it's not the best beer in the world, but it's a good solid beer. And according to this, um, uh, they've had a couple other uh, special limited edition beers Trooper 666 and Red and Black. Uh, Red and Black was when they did the Book of Souls, and they have okay. a song. Uh, they have a single off there called the Red and the Black, and that's what that was about. It was pretty good too. So a total um, of all the beers they sold has equivalented to 15 million pints. That's really good. That's not bad. That's not bad here. And, and, and that's uh, a band that loves to drink some beer. Yeah, and uh, this one, Hollowed, will be available um, from October of this year for a, rim- a limited uh, period of months. So, so during October. So we don't we know be, where we can so get So we're going to have to get Oktoberfest and that, huh? Yeah, yeah. I always get that Oktoberfest like, variety pack, the yeah. Sam Adams one. That stuff is good. Maybe I'll only drink beer in the winter. Are you trying to scratch while you're sitting on it? Yeah, she's, she's uh, a little rambunctious tonight, eh? Well, she's cranky because it's late, and then she just gets cranky. Well, I do too. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I tell you what, uh, Iron Maiden, uh, I mean, they've, they've, they've put their name on everything from their beer to, there's probably Iron Maiden toilet paper out there somewhere. Probably. So, I, pr- I think it's pretty cool if you connect the two. I mean, but there's a lot of bands that are do, done wine. Doing the beer, beer. yeah, do, yeah. Uh, yeah. Megadeth has their wine. Uh mm. I think Sat Ozzy has a wine. I'd love to Anth- try them all. Anthrax has a beer. Uh, I can't remember. The problem is you names. can't really find them. Any. Like if you can find it, you know, like good luck. For know? a while, I didn't, I never saw these. I only read about them online. Right. Mm. So I read about it online. So it has to be true. But I has read that when Le- uh, Lemmy uh, had a Jack Daniels bottle with his face on it. I don't know if that was true or not. But I read. I I mean well, I read about it. Jack I, and Coke was his his favorite drink until. Until the end, when his doctor said he needed to cut back, and he started, and he, switched, he switched he's to vodka, vodka and orange juice. I think yeah. so. Yeah, he switched from bourbon and coke to do a screwdriver, just you know, for health reasons. So well, screwdrivers. That's be so a, fucking metal. Yeah, <laughs> screwdrivers, Jack and Coke. You're talking about really heavy drinks. When we talk about heavy, one of the bands that come to mind uh, with heavy, one of the first heavy metal bands, like really, really heavy, that I got into was Children of Bodom. Yes. And one of the big Favorite. topics going around is ex Children uh, Children of Bodom guitarist. Uh, is it uh, Rope Latvala? Yes. Uh, he was kicked out of the band, and now we finally know why. So, Dennis, tell me why. I'm, well, I mean, actually, we don't exactly know why. It's still up in speculation. It, because, he, was, he feels that he was really betrayed, though. Right. He, he's coming out saying that right before uh, their last album that they had done, um, I Worship Chaos, Like it was like three days before, before they were about the to start recording, yeah. he was just kicked out of the band, and he... Apparently, he wasn't given an explanation, and he said for the last two years, he wasn't even able to pick up a guitar, and he was just plagued by alcoholism. Yeah. Just, he was he was an oppressed fucking mess for a long time. So, of course they kicked him out, though. I mean, it kind of goes back to the Dave Mustaine syndrome, you know? I mean, you're going to hurt the band eventually. Yeah, well, I mean, what what happened is is he said that he was never giving, he was never given a real reason. Why? But then, um, in an interview a couple years ago with Alexi, the front man from Children of Bodom, 
he mentioned that hell they, of a guitarist. Yeah, he's great. He's awesome. And uh, he, he was actually, uh, he has that awesome shirt that just says Smoke Crack and Worship Satan on it. Yeah. I've been trying to find that shirt for a while, but I, I can't, but I want to get it. But I digress, anyway. What he's saying um, is that basically it came down to right around when they were starting to do their new album, they felt that they wanted to kind of go in a new direction, kind of reinvent themselves, and they felt that uh, Rope's work ethic wasn't up to the same standards as theirs. Well, of course. I mean, like, because Children of Bonham is a band that is always progressing. I mean, yeah. I, I've i always, I, I don't think they've put out a bad album. I, I don't think so either. Some are better than others, but yeah, Follow, follow the, the Reaper. Follow the Reaper, man. That, that, that was instrumental in yeah. me getting into the whole yeah. de- melodic yeah, me death too. metal thing. That and a Hate Breeder. Oh, uh, and Hate Crew Death Roll. Oh yeah, my yeah, God, that man. Was great that, that, too. man, that was a good uh, album. What was that? Blood Drunk was a great Blood album. Blood Drunk. I mean, really? I mean, like you can kind of say, I mean, some of them are better than others. But, hey, they, they, they but they're all albums. consistently You know what? Good. The, the album before uh, I Worship Chaos, or maybe after. Uh, either way, there's a there's an album called Halo of Blood. That's that was a, before, that, I believe. That's before, that's okay. Before, I think. And uh, Halo of Blood is really good, too, yeah. man. Yeah, that's a really, yeah. Actually, I remember Alex from kind of the corner borrowed that CD from me. And, really? Uh, yeah, he like, borrowed it for like three months and I finally gave it back to me. But anyway, man, I, I, I'm i a big fan yeah. of Treasure Bro. I think I heard... Reckless Repentless was uh, the last one that I yeah. actually bought. Like the physical CD form. I got like, I got into them and they were you know because I was I was big into my Maiden and I loved my Sabbath mm-hmm. and I was trying to get into some newer stuff and my buddy said there's a band called Children of Bodom and yeah. on and I heard this song called uh, uh, Living Dead Beat mm-hmm. and I was like it starts off kind of creepy and it yeah. really just fucking nails it man I, I I'm a it's big a fan band, of Children man. of Bodom I'd love to see them live. Yeah, I mean, I agree. They're kind of, uh, they're kind of like death in the way that I think that they've just always been consistent. They've never really released anything that's just yeah. Sucked. And an, and uh, yeah. Alexi is a hell of a guitarist and it's a frontman for that matter. He is really good and he puts on a hell of a show. I've seen video. I mean, he really cares for the music and for the band. <clears> so uh, thank you, Church of Boto. Keep it coming. Yeah, please. All right, uh, moving on, next piece of news, um, something I'm excited about. We don't have a lot of details on this yet, but Tim Ripper Owens, Chris Caffrey uh, have joined a new project by Steve DiGiorgio and Mark Zonder. Am I pronouncing that right? I think so. Um, Basically, uh, Frontier Music has signed a handful of American metal musicians to collaborate on a new musical project. The songs that will comprise the first album are being comprised by the following people that I just mentioned. But... um, uh, what is it saying here that Caffrey came out at, well basically Owens and uh, Caffrey who is from the Trans-Siberian Orchestra yeah they, and they've of been, course Owens from Iced Earth right Owens from Priest <clears throat> yeah and uh, you know um, Steve DiGiorgio who's been literally every fucking Iced thing. Earth again yeah and another uh, Iced Earth veteran yeah um, and uh, Testament but it, it just says here that they've been wanting to work on something for a long time and then finally this record label signed them got them together but I've read the article a few times and it doesn't actually say what the name of the band is going to be well I and think it, they're yeah. just waiting you know to right. see if magic happens they might get together and they might say oh well nothing happened you know um, and who's well, mixed... something's gonna happen. Something's well, gotta happen. I, yeah, mean, I don't well, know if it's gonna be good or not. But well, I mean, you know, Act of Defiance saw that something would happen. Yeah, yeah. You know, when Sean Drover and Chris Broderick were like, "We got so many good ideas, Dave Mustaine won't let us do anything." <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they get into a band themselves, and their record sold nothing. I listened to it too. It right. wasn't that great. It was all right, but but and and even if it does suck musically, uh, we know it's gonna sound good because Roy Z is producing it. Who um, Which he, is, he mixed for Bruce Dickinson. Right, he's most famous for uh, mixing and producing Rob Halford and Bruce Dickinson solo albums. Yeah. So that's what he's most known did for. Did he do Chemical Wedding too? I think, yeah, I think yeah, he did. Chemical I think Wedding he, was awesome. I think we need to get like... Tattoo uh, Millionaire was good too. We need to get like a fact checker at the end of the show to just go through and, and, and check us. Fix all, all our fuck-ups. Fix all our fuck-ups. But I'm, I'm, I think that he that Roy Z did all of uh, Bruce's and all of Halford's solo albums. Like, Did he do shit with Fight? He might have. I'm I have. Not, yeah, he might have done that. But nice. um, yeah, I'm I'm mainly familiar with him. Actually, the first album I ever bought was Halford's Resurrection, that That's he good. had done. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I remember picking that one up, and I was like, "This is a great selling album." And it was actually one of the first times that I went and looked through the book to see who the producer was. 
and I saw that it was Roy Z, and I was like, wow, this guy knows how to make some stuff. I remember so doing that uh, with uh, Number of the Beast and seeing that it was Martin Birch. That's cool. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, good. And uh, Mike Zonder, actually, uh, is the drummer for a band called Warlord. Yeah. Who, uh, yeah. Warlord's really good. I actually uh, never and heard I of knew, I, I, I'm reading this now, and I'm, I see it says Fate's Warning. I knew who Fate's Warning is. They're really good. Okay, yeah. So, I yeah, but uh, Warlord's great, too. I mean, definitely, uh, I... There's got to be some magic that's going to happen. Hopefully. Yeah, actually, one of my favorite things about doing this show is that when I read through this, I find out a bunch of things that I've never heard of before, yeah. you know? And I've never, I've actually never even heard of Warlord Yeah. that I can remember. So I'm listening to it. I was reading through this. And I'm just like, oh, we need to check them out. And and it sounds really cool. It's like old school yeah. power metal kind of stuff, kind of like uh, early Halloween. I'm, I'm digging it. So. I'll probably go home and listen to the rest of their catalog tonight. And what a great band name, Warlord. Yeah, it's this perfect metal name. You know? It's pretty good. I yeah. dig it. I dig it. Okay. Okay. Oh, man. This, this time. You want to start You want to yeah, start this off? This is going to get me heated. All right, so Dan Mustaine is out again. <laughs> He's opened his mouth once again. Um, let's see. <coughs> last year at the Grammys, uh, Megadeth received a Grammy for the me- uh, greatest metal performance. Or uh, dystopia, with their, for right. their album Dystopia. This is the single, I think, that they actually got okay. it. The performance of Dystopia. The, I Either think, way, I think. Dave has said not only is he sure that he will be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but the Grammy should have gone to only him, not his band. Listen, a band is not one person. I can sit there all day and tell you that Iron Maiden is only Steve Harris. And I'd be a bullshitter. You would be. Um, I could tell you all day that Metallica is only Lars Ulrich. And I would, again, be That's a bullshitter. Bull. That's bullshit. But it's like, why would you say that? Like, if I was David Ellison, I'd be pretty would, pissed off. Right, because Junior, Dave Ellison, has been there. The only album that he hasn't been on, the only Megadeth album that he hasn't been on was Endgame. Yeah. I believe. Please fact check me if I'm wrong about that. Oh, someone will. The, yeah. It's the internet. Yeah, it's the internet. Actually, Let my buddy know. Kevin Coates, who is a huge Megadeth fan, we talked about this uh, uh, earlier this week about this Dave Mustaine, uh, and he brought up some good points as well. So definitely comment your uh, opinion there, Kevin. I definitely yeah, agree. yeah, let us know about that. Um, but yeah, basically he's just saying here that you know he was happy to get the Grammy, but that he wished it was just for him. And then he went on later to say that he thinks that maybe someday he'll be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but that he thinks that he's in there. Just it's kind only of, a matter of time. He's or in, well, he's in there just kind of like via Metallica because he because he feels that the eleven months that he was in Metallica for think of it Metallica has been around for thirty years. Dave Mustaine was in Metallica for eleven months, and I'm not saying that he wasn't super influential to what they did, but I mean it was just eleven months. Like I, I can only imagine that whenever like James Hetfield thinks back on his Dave Mustaine days, it's probably just a blink in his head. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, granted, he did have a lot. He has a lot of song credits on, on Kill Em All and Ride the Lightning. Of course he does. But, I mean, why? And they actually did offer, uh, they did invite him to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame to yeah. be in the audience, but yeah. not to be on stage. But he just declined. I think he said he was on tour or something. Yeah, so. they, well, it's, it's kind of like, you know, when Ke- uh, Guns N' Roses got inducted and they tried to invite Axel, and Axel was like, you know, I'm not going. Uh, so I think it has some, it just, that, that mentality. Of just yeah, wanting I, I just, to not accept, you know. But also, I think Dave was a little pissed off that they played Master of Puppets. They, when, they did do that. When he accepted his award, they played Master of Puppets. But the Grammys are fucked anyway. Yeah, the Grammys, I mean, who gives a fuck about the Grammys? I think Dave even said they asked him about it, and he said that, oh, I didn't even realize it was playing. Like, are you serious, Dave? You, really, you didn't realize? You didn't realize it. Dun, dun, dun. I mean, they fucked up. I mean, that was pretty messed up with them. Well, to it's because the Grammys is a vice versa of today's music, and it all right. sucks. Um, but yeah, I mean, going back to it, man. I mean, Dave Mustaine, you gotta. Why would you say that? Like that? That <laughs> it's, just it, it's such a disingenuous. Because I mean, M- Megadeth has been a revolving door of band members. You know sure. what I mean? But Junior's been there since the beginning, and he's only missed one album, as far as I yeah, know. Yeah. So why would the great? And, and if you look on the album Dystopia, Dave Mustaine didn't write that all by himself. No. See, didn't. he has other writing credits to other people in the band. So why would the Grammy just go to him? I don't see his mentality. I don't see. Why he thinks it should just go to him? And, yeah, exactly. I would say the same thing if Ice Earth got a Grammy and John Schaefer was this like, it should just, just go to me. 
Yeah. It doesn't make any sense because the Incrucible or uh, Incorruptible had uh, songwriting from all, from all yeah. the bands. So all I, the band I don't know. I think that it's really cocky and I'm kind of yeah. pissed off about it's it. It's one of those things that even if you feel it in your heart, it's not something you should really say out loud. Yeah. You know what I, mean? I understand. It's like, it, and uh, I mean, it, it kind of kind of gets me fired, man. Like, yeah. Because and, I respect and, Megadeth. I really do. Trying to push the envelope, trying to be better than Metallica and have that um, rivalry sense with a feud. Yeah. Even though they've worked together, I mean, supposedly, just kind of reading this, you know, I really thought they kind of buried the hatchet when they did the Big Four thing. You know what I mean? Like, okay, they're working together again. You know, maybe they'll never collaborate on another album again, but at least they're playing together. But maybe that they, was so awkward. It had that, to have been. That interview with Lars and Dave and, like, the camera. Oh, yeah, it was just like, just like, oh, my kid's like It was Megadeth. just like a camera guy there, and they would just have to say something. It's like, my kid listened to Megadeth one time. I do, I do like that, where he's like, my, yeah, my kid was listening. And you could totally tell Lars is bullshitting. Yeah. Because he's just like, um, you know, my kids, they... They were listening they, to the Peace Sells album in the car, and it was my son's favorite album. For yeah, so and like, it was like, did you spank him? Yeah, did you, you know? spank him? <laughs> <laughs> but like, he's just like... No, he probably actually punched him in the face. But he's just like, happened. uh, think of something to say. Oh, my kids, they like, uh, Megadeth, Dave. You know, it's just, it was really awkward. Uh, the real bear of the hatchet is going to be, honestly, when I see James and Dave shake hands. They I did. Mean, do, there is a video out there, actually, where they tried to do a fist bump, like, during the Big Four thing, and some guy actually walked in front of the camera as they were doing the fist bump and blocked it. So, really... So, it, really, they might have just flicked each yeah, other off really. or just spit on each other, and nobody really re knows what happened. But it looked yeah. like they were about to do the fist bump. Yeah. So, it's not real. It's not real. It's all fake. Fake news. Fuck that fake guy. Fake media. It's all <laughs> fake. Wrong. But actually, well, listen, if they were ever to do an album, it would be huge. Yeah, I mean, honestly, dude, if, I mean, like, whenever they, they what was that Lou Reed album they did? If they're willing to work with Lou Reed, why not just work with Mustaine? It, it could We don't talk about Lulu. Yeah, we don't. What we even don't, is Lulu? He who must I not love, be named. I love, I love the people that try to defend that record. <laughs> you are like, some hardcore material. Yeah, it's just fan. like, oh, man, good. Sometimes I'm I, the table so good. I think I'm like a Metallica, a Metallica fan, dude. If you're defending Saint Anger in that Lou Reed album, dude, you're in listen. A, you're I, if in I can agree, level. if I can agree that Virtual Eleven is a bad album, right? You can agree. I mean, Como Estas Amigos, that's a song of Virtual Eleven, and we don't talk about it. We, we're not, no. We're but not you don't to want to talk. About I am the table. You know, it's like that. That picture has Dave Mustaine. I am the king, and then Slayer. I'm the Antichrist, and then yeah. Anthrax. I am the law, and it has. James Hadfield, and it's like, I'm the table. Like, it doesn't fit. Yeah. So anyway, Dave, just keep your fucking mouth shut. Yeah. Enjoy your records. Enjoy your Grammy Awards. And have your band enjoy them with you. Because honestly, right. after that, I don't think Chris Adler or the Brazilian guy you got to work with you would not work with you again. Yeah, but we're actually not done with Megadeth because there's a little bit of peace. There, there's a little bit of other info that we need to throw in there with that. Is that Dave Mustaine recounts... One of the main reasons why Marty Freeman left Megadeth. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Now, for a long time, we always knew that Marty Freeman, uh, for people who know, he's off in Japan now doing some crazy stuff. He's been living in Japan for a long time. He yeah. speaks fluent Japanese. He's playing some crazy uh, J-pop kind of things. And he's actually extremely popular over there. And he's damn good he's, playing yeah, guitar. Yeah, he's very good. But um, he, basically, uh, from what we knew for a long time is that they just kind of wanted to go in different directions, you know. <laughs> Marty wanted to go into a more poppy direction, and you know, I guess Dave wanted to keep it more heavy. At least that's what we've been told. But now Dave's coming out with a little bit more information, saying that actually there was a solo um, from the song "Breadline" off of Risk, which actually is my favorite song off of Risk. Risk I, came out in '99, if, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, that, doesn't it have Crush him on it? Yes, yes, it does. Crush. It's, a, it's Crush. an awful album. We can all agree that it was a bad album. But that song's not bad. But that, but I, but if if you put a gun in my head, like like they're putting a gun to Trump's head. <clears throat> but anyway, if you it, that would have to be my favorite song off the album. But um, basically, what he's saying now is that uh, Marty did a solo for Breadline, right? And that uh, whenever the record company heard it, they're like, no, 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 we don't like this solo. So Dave was just like, well, you gotta tell him. 
that you didn't like it because it's not going to come out of my mouth. You know what I mean? So because of all the work that he did with Rust in Peace and shit. Right. I mean, like, I mean, Marty's amazing. You know yeah. I mean, like, I mean, nobody can dispute that. But it, I mean, it came out and basically some high executive didn't like it. So Dave and Sting went and he re-recorded the solo. And then whenever they were listening to the final dub of it in the studio, nobody had actually told Marty about it. And then the breadline came along and Marty's all excited to hear the solo. And it's, <laughs> and it's not his solo. And, and according to the article, from what Dave is saying, from Dave's uh, recollection of it, uh, Marty started crying, and I guess that was the fucking last, the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back. From, from so, I mean, like, what's, that's, that's kind of shitty. That's shitty, dude. That's really disappointing. I would just tell you, I mean, I would just have to tell myself, you know, because it's not, and again, this is coming from Dave, so who, you know, maybe the truth is somewhere in the middle. You know what I mean? Like, who, who really knows exactly what happened with that? But, um, but yeah, we definitely know that, that Marty was just not really happy. He wanted to go more in a poppy direction, which, I mean, I don't I agree I don't think with. his name is even on the uh, credits for that record. For, um, for, for Risk? Risk? Oh, wow. Because he was, was on Euthanasia. Yeah, he was definitely on And Euthanasia. he was on Cryptic Writings. Yes, definitely. Yeah. I, I believe he was. I mean, I thought Risk um, was his last album. I could be wrong about that, though, but I'm pretty sure... Uh, Unless he just had no input after the uh, the higher exec said he anything might not. about it, and he also played on Hidden Treasures. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah, that's another. Didn't that uh, have uh, that had Anarchy in the UK or no, no, was it a uh, I had Paranoid and uh, Paranoid, Mr. Mr. Nice Guy. Yeah, Mr. Nice and Guy. And yeah, Ways yeah. to Die, which is my I favorite man of the song. I remember my friend had that album back in the day, and I thought that was really cool because I'd never seen Hidden Treasures before. Robert Eggnor. Yeah. Yeah. Ninety nine fries to fry. Yes, sir. <laughs> but uh, drown this tie. <laughs> Dave, what are you singing about in that song? We always talked about, like, he's singing, like, getting ready for a date, and, like, the day he walks <laughs> in, and he's like, try on this tie. Try on this I'm not tie. ready to see you yet. It's a long-running joke between between uh, between us. But, um... It really is. All right. That's it for the news. That is all the news. That is all... That, that's a good piece of news. I, um... I, I, I... As far as the Megadeth thing goes, man, like, I, I just... I wish she would just chill... And we'll focus on him and focus on doing his doing his shit. Okay. You know? All right. Now, now I've been actually trying to think of a question. For uh, the, all right. For this, the man, the this man's going to try and spring the topic well, on Well, I mean, so. the thing is, we just got through seeing Spider-Man. So the whole day, I mean, the whole night, I've been trying to analyze this fucking Spider-Man. Analyze how shitty it was? It wasn't that bad. Just, I mean, if anything, see it on your fire stick or your fucking yeah. red box or something. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't, like, amazing, you know, but, no. I mean, go see it. Not to, not to go back into it, but I think that if uh, you're a fan of the 80s, 90s Spider-Man thing, you're, you're probably not. You're going to critique this motherfucker. So if you're a fan thing. of, like, the real Spider-Man, you're probably not going to like it. Right, yeah. I mean, the Spider-Man that just has web shooters and a spider tracer and some leotards, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was no spider sense. <laughs> I love it. He's basically Iron Man in a Spider-Man suit. But anyway, yeah. okay. So I've been thinking for the last uh, three seconds about what the title, about what the <laughs> topic of this You're is going to so be. You're so creative, right? I am because you know I'm a, I'm a Renaissance man. Okay, which do you think is the worst album? Virtual X, Virtual Eleven, Virtual Eleven, or uh, Risk? Oh, I'm not going to go I'm sorry. Um. I was actually thinking of the X Factor, but virtual, uh, yeah, virtual. Uh, you want to risk? I mean, I, I can do both because I, I think the X. I think, uh, but I think Virtual Eleven is better than Risk. Okay. Uh, because uh, okay, when X Factor was written, oh, because I, I don't like X Factor. I mean, I like X Factor. Because these are kind of the two worst albums. Yeah, from though, the and, band. and I, I feel sorry for Blaze because those are the Blaze years. Right. But I don't think it was bad because of the uh, because of Blaze. Um, I think during the X Factor, um, uh, Steve Harris is going through a divorce, and so it was really dark. And there was a, like there's a song over there called um, uh, something about the unknown. I can't remember. Either way, it's uh, it's basically about like you know the future of his four kids. You know he's got he's got three girls and a um, he's got three girls and a boy. Right. Don't ask me how I know that. Because you're just stalking him through a window at night. I might be. 
I, I, that's I, what I would I do. I probably am. That's what I would do if I lived next to him. So, right. okay, so uh, X Factor, the record, or that's that record is really dark. And I'm trying to remember some of the singles here uh, from the X Factor. It came out, I remember it came out in 95. Uh, X Factor had Sign of the Cross, Lord of the Flies, but what was that song? Blood on the World's Hands. That was the song. And it's just about, like, blood on his hands if his kids fuck up. So, like, if he had killed his kids, the blood on his hands of the kids? No, not what he's saying. It's just, like... I don't even like that album. Honestly, I don't even have anything to say about this, because I think they're both awful. I don't really, really? like... I don't like I think they're one, not really. great. Uh, I think that... Also, there's a song on X-Factor called 2 AM. That one's not that good. But Judgment Day is pretty good. Uh, Virtual 11, though, the opener, Future Real... That's terrible, but the one song that I like from Virtual Eleven is I can't uh, think of one. The Angel and the Gambler. That's a good song, but that's yeah. also the song that's had. That's also the album that says "Como Estas Amigos," and I mean I'm not into that. Uh, the Klansmen's on that record. Um, I am the clan. So, so, so basically, you'll just default to Iron Maiden because they're both fucking terrible no, albums. And, uh, not and necessarily. Just... I just think that I can't. Okay, I'm basing it off of I can at least find one song on Virtual Eleven that I like, right. which is Angel the Gambler. And I mean, Clansman's not terrible. But when you go to Risk, I mean, <laughs> I mean we, we talked about Bloodline. <laughs> the only reason Bloodline, I can kind of yeah, yeah. like Risk is because like Goldberg in the late '90s came out. To he did. He him. was in the music video. He was in the music video. Right. So I, I can. That. I mean, but but I'm gonna default to Maiden because Virtual Eleven to me is the better album than Risk. I agree. So when we look at like one, some of our favorite bands' worst album, the worst of the worst is Sorry, Dave Mustaine. Risk. But we Maybe, all. Maybe I'm. You know what though? I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give Megadeth uh, a mulligan on this one. I'm only gonna present your shitty award to only you, Dave Mustaine, <laughs> yeah. not your band. Well, we're not is gonna blame that, Risk well, on everybody well, else. Well, here's the thing: right? that if that's how we want to be, that's fair, right. right? Fair enough, right? You're right. Right. You only want to get the award to yourself if right. it's great. So take credit for the shitty Risk album you fucking put out, right? You heard it here. Sorry, metal Dave. for metal, no but, rules. But in Dave's defense, no remorse, we, we can no all, regret. We, we we can all agree that that Saint Anger was worse than, than all of them. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think Saint Anger was tick, worse. Tick, tick, talk. Fuck, I hate that song. Isn't that what what's what album has two by four on it? Uh, two by four that was load. Is that load? I, I believe like it was load or reload. Yeah. You know, I heard that song on the radio one time. They played two by four. I was on the really radio? blown away. Wow. I was like, that's, isn't that too much? I'm surprised they don't play Mama's song. Uh, Mama said. I fucking hate that. Yeah, song, that's an dude. awful song. And uh, what song was No Leaf Clover on? That was on. That was SNM. only on S and M. It was right? on S and M. This, yeah, yeah, this but, one. I, I bet it was because that song was shit too. See, I I don't my I think uh um what was the other one? A minus human. I think that was the better song. That yeah. That was the better song, but they were both pretty not. Yeah, I was saying that. Pretty Anger, not man. Good. Whatever. Fucking awful. But yeah. You know who? Wait, you know what band has not put out a bad album ever? Slayer. That's true. Diablos and Musica was a little different, but it's not bad. But it was it was so heavy. It is different, but it, it was different. You it stands out from the rest of their catalog, but it is a little different. But it's that's not bad. I, that's what it's I think bad. about South of Heaven. You know, it's not. It's like true. It's it, it's more it's of a Sabbathy kind of feel. But man, it's great. It's a good album. It's really. I agree great. with that. There's actually there's a couple bands that haven't released too bad now, but we're not going to go down that. Well, that we'll go about uh, down we'll that road uh, right. next week. When we start reviewing albums, of course, our we first album... We have to do this. We've been talking about yeah, this. Our first just album, find the time. Our first album is what we're going to be doing is Ice to Earth, uh, Incorruptible. Uh, we can always make time for Heavy Metal. We're going to make time for you fans. Uh, Incorruptible will be our first record that we um, review. So definitely take this time after watching this video to look it up and listen to it. See and let us think. know what albums you want us to review. I think it was Kevin on there who wanted us to review some Megadeth albums. Yeah, we definitely will. And we're, we, yeah, you I'd know, be down with doing Dystopia if you want because yeah. I mean, we all know the old ones. you know. Yeah, I, I would like to review Killing is My Business because a lot wow. of people are not into that album. Yeah. And I can see why. Myself it's really, included. It's yeah. not, I, I usually like a band's first album a yeah. lot of the times. But uh, yeah, it was, it, man, it, that, it was rough. That, yeah. That's a rough album. It's because they were on crack. <laughs> they were on a <laughs> lot of crack. Don't and, forget to check out our Patreon account on Metal uh, for Metal, a uh, Patreon account where you can pledge us a dollar. Know that you never have to do that. You can always come. What are you reaching for? Your penis. Uh, okay. But instead, uh, I touch Rosie. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, don't know you never have to do that. You can always come back and get the free stuff. 
But uh, we would love a dollar to get us a new microphone. That would be, it doesn't even work. It doesn't even work. We have it's it as a decoration. Here. That's okay. Uh, don't forget to, of course, check out our Instagram account where we have plenty of pictures on there for, uh, mm -hmm. to check you guys out. Uh, Metal for Metal Facebook page is up, and our, also our website is up. Uh, please do not forget to subscribe to the channel and uh, you please. know keep it coming. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe, subscribe. We would really appreciate a like, comment, and uh, did I not mention subscribe? I would love that as well. Just subscribe to the goddamn channel, man. Uh, thank you guys so much for your support. Uh, I'm really blown away with the support we've had uh, in this month and a half of doing this. We're having a lot of fun doing Lots it. Lots of fun, man. If nobody, even if nobody's watching, I'm watching it, and I'm, I'm enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, we're having a blast. So thank you guys so much for your support. Uh, always remember, you guys are heavy fucking metal. And before I get off the uh, air real quick, I do want to tell you, of course, in July, Monsters from Outer Space are going to be uh, in Charleston, uh, I think, playing at the Mill. If I, ha if I have that wrong, I will correct it. But uh, they're going to be with the band Voorhees. And I happen to be in talks with the guys from Monster Rider Space. You might have seen it on the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have the Psychos on the show probably next week. I watched a lot of the songs you put on there. They're really good. Yeah, so we're going to really have good. them on here uh, next week to promote their uh, show July 15th. I think it's a Saturday. Uh, Voorhees will be with them. And there's another band that's going to be with them as well. And if you want to know more, tune into the show when we have them on there. Uh, so thank you guys very much. Again, I'm PJ Steven. That's Dennis Parker. This has been, of course, the Metal for Metal Show. Thank you guys for watching.